Welcome everybody, it is time for another gentle roast of my subscribers' lyrics. You guys submitted a lot of different lyrics, and now I'm going to tear them apart limb by limb. Let the roast begin. And this first song is Passive by Darian. You can actually go and watch it on YouTube, but he made a pretty intense critical error here. If you look down far in the second to last stanza, he spelled then completely wrong. Instead of putting an E in there, he put an A, roasted. If we don't come together, then we've already lost. <laughs> My favorite part about the song is what I think is the pre-chorus. He sings, in the light of day, in the dark of night, in every cliche, we can lose ourselves for good. And I, I it's cool that he's so self-aware there, and because he's self-aware, he's actually able to get away with using cliches. Cliche, cliche, yeah, I'm using cliches to make a point. Okay then. What I didn't like so much was this line, the mind is so powerful, it's imperfect to its host. I don't have a clue what you mean by that. Say it differently or put other lines in there that help it to make more sense, but I would make that clearer. Also, you said nobody said love was kind, Actually, the Bible does. Next is Flora and Christina's song, Reality of the Fake, and <laughs> I think this is a pretty easy roast here because something can't be the reality of the fake. Those are opposites, guys. It's reality or it's fake. You can't have both. There's no way you could combine those two things to have some sort of deep paradoxical meaning that's actually more deep and interesting than I was expecting it to be in a crazy cool way. Dang it. I think the title, even if it is maybe a little bit awkward, sounds deep and interesting. And I really like this first stanza, where'd it go, where'd you go, decency. You don't know I'm waiting here, I miss you, I miss the old. And I like how they rhyme old with no, it shows that they're advanced rhymers. One thing that I would suggest changing, I still think that you're good, I don't treat myself right. I feel like there's not a transition between those lines. It feels like two different stories are being told at that moment, and I wish that you would split that apart into maybe two different stanzas, or even two different songs. In Hope's song, Home, I'm confused, because in the very last stanza we hear, we'll get on a horse and drive into the sun. Hope, don't you know that you don't drive horses, you ride them, you drive cars. Also, the sun is a really long ways away. You're, it, it's a long trip, you should pack a sandwich and it's gonna be really hot, you're going to die. You should not do that, it is a bad idea. If somebody asks you, should I drive into the sun on my horse, you should tell them no and save a life. But seriously though, I really liked this song, particularly the main idea in the chorus and how she keeps coming back to that main idea. I'm sorry I can't love you like you want me to, so if you want I will just leave so you can see her, but the movies don't got anything on us and I don't mean to be superfluous but I'll sit in the back seat as you get on the road tell me that you love me until we're home until we're home and it's like this unrequited love that only has like a couple more hours to last as they're driving home and it's so interesting like the characters and their her, her struggle and her feelings come to life so well I will say that you might want to say that you ride horses rather than drive them and then there's a metaphor in the first stanza those candles you light up are hammers of fire it's, it's like, I, I kind of think I see what you're saying, but it's also a little bit confusing. And I think that there's probably a better metaphor out there waiting for you. And then we have Sarah's song, Broken Heartstrings, and she decided to share this as a paragraph. Sarah, songs aren't paragraphs. Honestly, how do you make fun of somebody's song for looking like a paragraph? What, what level has this channel descended to if I'm making fun of somebody for their song being a paragraph? Who am I even? What is the purpose of all this? Anyway, roasted with your paragraph song. Gosh, who knows, maybe it's a new art form, maybe I'm stupid. Seriously though, I think the words, I've healed all my scars is a little bit cliche and you wanna avoid cliches. What do you mean by I've healed all my scars? Write that down and chances are, nine times out of 10 with a little bit of tweaking, that's gonna be a better line than using a cliche that like a million other people have used. What I do like about this though, is you're off to a great start with brainstorming an idea. A lot of songs start out as paragraphs and you have to get your ideas down in paragraph form and then you can condense them and refine them into lyrics. Next is Riley's song, Happy Ending. And Riley actually is a one man band called Parasol. And after much consideration as to what to roast him for, just watch the music video for the first 30 seconds. He's he's strumming ukulele and you can hear the ukulele and that's great. But then the drums come in and there's no drums. 
He's just in the woods with the ukulele. There's no drums. Where are they coming from? He completely forgot the drums. You see that he tries to make up for it by tapping his foot, but he taps his foot when there's no drum sound. And then there's drum sounds when he's not tapping his foot. So obviously he's not using an invisible drum set. I just completely don't understand. Roasted. But seriously, go watch this music video. I really liked his first verse because there was really good poetic sound coordination. Notice in particular the first four lines, he uses the sounds I, A, and O a lot, which gives it a sense of unity and helps everything Thing to fit together and feel very intentional. I gave up a little while ago. I gave up the things that only I know and I, I wish that I hadn't been so slow, etc, etc. Well done. But he gets less unified in the second verse. In the second line there, then I remember that it won't because of my dear friends who's talking in third person, but then it seems like he's referring to the same person in second person later when he says, and if I believe in you. Uh, when you write a song and you're talking about somebody else, it can be very confusing for your listener if you switch how you refer to them. It can be tempting to do it when it sounds artsy or interesting, but remember that if you're writing a song for an audience, the point is for them to be able to understand it. I like his cadence near the end, alight these things that I have made, I'll gladly watch them burn. Bravo, bravo. And then we hear in Melanie's song, See You Soon, he was the only one I saw in that room and I knew I'd risk it all to be with you. And later, all I know is that his name's Jordan. So basically some guy named Jordan scared you into dating somebody else? How scary is this guy named Jordan? Oh my gosh. But seriously, I think you're doing that same thing where you use second and third person interchangeably. I would just make this portion clearer. What I really love about the song is how specific it gets. She mentions a name, Jordan. She says that he was Canadian and he was like my guardian that night when we were a little drunk and our mouths tasted like rum. These are details and specifics that make it sound like she actually experienced this and knows what she's talking about. And I think that's awesome for a songwriter. And then we get into Alexa's song, Ocean Lights. Alexa, you have a big problem here. You say, you were in my dream last night, we sitting on the rocks near the sea, and you were the brightest light. Okay, if you're by the ocean and it's at night, there's probably not a lot of competition to be the brightest light. It's pretty dark out there. And then you mention ocean lights. What are ocean lights? There's, are there like anglerfish popping out of the water to say hello, like in The Little Mermaid? And then you say, see the palm trees sway and glow, but it's dark. How can you see these things? Are you using like the light of this person you're with to look at the palm trees? You jumped into the sea, so I followed you. You know it's dangerous to swim in the sea at night, right? So I got in the back of a great white shark, the jellyfish sparked up as we embarked. Oh, I get it, it's surrealism. Okay, self-roasted. Alexa's doing something really cool here where she's taking unrealistic imagery to kind of exaggerate and to, to make a point, to create, in this case, a dreamlike landscape and atmosphere that kind of makes us feel like we're in another world and it's really cool. Two suggestions I have for you. Number one, my hair's gone old and gray is a little bit of a cliche. I'm a poet. Alexa, answer this in the comments. Does the fact that this old person's loving this person and it's around the ocean mean that the girl is a mermaid? That's my, my own private theory. And then you use the word subaqueous. I, I don't know, I don't know. You can use that word in your song for sure. Just make sure that you're using it because it's the best word that could go there, not just because you think the word is cool and sounds cool to you, because it might sound cool to you, what do other people think about it though? Overall, I love that song. And then we get into Jana's song, Make Me Like One of Your Paintings. She says it's darker than black and more fierce than amber. You should talk to the first guy and trade words because you're misspelling it the opposite way. Roasted. And then later we hear sharpen my senses, carve out my edges, make me like one of your paintings. Did you just say carve? Do you know how paintings work? You don't carve a painting, gosh. Lines that I really liked here. Teach me how to be in the foreground of my own life. I think that's a really cool idea and concept, especially when you're sticking to this metaphor of paintings throughout the song. And you do a great job of staying consistent with that, except for maybe carve, because that does seem to have more to do with sculpting. And then I really love the little metaphors you have throughout as well. It's like decorating cake with the dough unbaked that rhymes and it's awesome. But yeah, and I like it overall. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching Gentle Roast number two. Check out the original Gentle Roast and be sure to sign up for my songwriting tips and prompts email list down below. It's gonna be lit. Something cool is coming soon too. Some song lyric writing lessons that are gonna blow your mind. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching. Keep writing lyrics, you guys are amazing. And I'll talk to you next time.